Welcome back. In the last video, we did a simple 2D agroforestry layout with chestnuts, pawpaws, and honeyberry. These are useful for printing out, for taking to the field, and also for generating nursery lists. I wanted to show you how we can use the component function to actually count up the number of trees. So if I click on this chestnut, it can go up here to the entity info and see that it's got 92 in the model. I've got 92 chestnuts here. If I, if I click on the pawpaw, I've got 100 and the honeyberry here, 621. This is really useful for when you're kind of tweaking things and you're moving stuff around. It'll automatically update that component count. So I wanted to make sure that you were aware of that. Um, I also wanted to show you how I lay things out for printing. So you probably noticed as you tilt, uh, the, the color here looks kind of weird. And if I do an overhead, it doesn't show up at all. This is SketchUp's way of telling us that these are on the same plane. And if I want to do a print, a 2D printed map, it doesn't work out so well. So what I'm actually going to do is, is take off the base map layer. And I'm going to select all of the things that I want to show up in the map. And then I'm going to go move it here. I can click on really any corner. And I'm going to hit the up key on my keyboard. And what that's going to do is constrain the movement in a just completely vertical on the blue axis. I'm going to click and then type one inch. And what that's effectively going to do is just stick it slightly above that base map so that now no matter how I, how I tilt things, it's, uh, it's, gonna look, it's gonna look right. Okay, so I like this overhead, you know, this top view that gets us directly vertical. One thing uh, that I would like to do now is to, is to rotate this back so that it's at true north. So I'm going to select everything I see, go back to my rotate tool and then find an edge here and then just rotate this back to the red axis. And now this should be pointing true north just like the, the photos that we imported are. You can see the waterer looks right and the scale bar and stuff. So great, now we can zoom in and sort of center on where we want the map come up to File and click Export 2D Graphic. And um, that should export now just as a, um, as a JPEG. Let's see, where did I stick it? Here it is. Okay, and here it is. So we can print this out. We can come in and edit with other programs to uh, add notes or legend or, or whatever. It's a little difficult to do that kind of thing in SketchUp. So I recommend uh, exporting it as a JPEG and, and doing, you know, scale bars as far as distance apart from trees and things in, in another program. You can do it in SketchUp here, but it doesn't print very well on when you've got such a, um, a large scale as this. Okay, I'm going to go through now some of the really neat 3D tools. And one of the best ways to, to do this is to go up to the 3D warehouse, and, which is a collection of all kinds of models that people have uploaded that they've made. So everything, people have done everything here. You can find buckets, you can find buildings, you can find cars, whatever uh, people have thought up. I've got a couple tree models in here. I'm gonna go ahead and just show you how to download. And it'll come right into your SketchUp model. Um, it may take a, a few minutes to download if it's a big, if it's a big file. If you're looking for trees, I recommend trying to find the 2D face me option, which is essentially just a photograph that rotates so that you're always looking at it. Um, and <laughs> here it is, but I've got the, uh, I've got one of these layers off. So there, let me turn that back on. And um, so this is the tree that I, I came up with through an external uh, plugin that I, I used a while back. And you can see what I mean by that 2D face me. It's actually, um, as I rotate here, it just kind of faces the camera, but it's, it uses a lot less memory than, a, uh, than an actual 3D tree would be. And you can move these around just like you would, um, you know, your circles, you can plop them down on top if you want to do a 3D view and, uh, and you can make it real pretty. I've already done some of that here, and I'm going to show you if I can uh, do it without the computer lagging. I'm going to start 
uh, clicking some of these layers that I did before. And um, 3D Honeyberry, 3D Pawpaw. I'm going to take off this chestnut layer. And let's take off our Honeyberry layer. And so now if I zoom in, you can see I kind of did a 3D version. These are all the, the sort of you know, 2D face me versions of 3D. I've got my berry layer here. I have a pawpaw layer. Pawpaw trees don't actually look like this, but um, anyway, it's the right size. And then my chestnut trees here. I can even come in here and, and I have imported a couple of, uh, of uh, other fun things. You can throw in, you know, a couple of chicken tractors here. I It looks like I maybe didn't put the, there we are. Um, that was just a download from another user. I can I can change the way I view stuff. So if I come over here and say position camera and I drop this here, then this is kind of just uh, as if I were standing there looking around. You know, fun stuff. It's nice to, to sort of um, visualize what might be uh, possible. You can download tractors and stick them in here to see how they might fit. Um, Pretty cool, especially if you want to get people excited about your project. That'll wrap up this series on 3D design tools for agroforestry. It was brought to you by the Savannah Institute as part of their Nutshell series. So keep an eye on the website, savannahinstitute.org, if this is something that you enjoyed. And sign up for our newsletter so you can stay in touch. We'll see you next time.